All right, welcome back to my channel. Things are getting exciting. We're actually building the MVP of our startup. And bear yourselves, because today we're gonna get very technical. I'm gonna show you everything I'm building, and I'll try to explain as clearly as I can the tech I'm using and why I'm using it. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. I'm gonna use the Edge Store library in a newly created Next.js application. To be clear, this is more of a mock, like a simulation is not actually a working prototype but most of the package flow is already getting shape. First, we need to create our next app and we're gonna do this with the simple create next app command with TypeScript, of course. Okay, let's just run npm run dev to see if everything's working fine. And yeah, we have our app set up and ready to go. Now let's set up the edge store package. For this, we just need to run npm install edge store for react. Now we will set up the edge store API. So we're gonna create an edge store folder with an edge store file that will catch all the requests to any path that includes the edge store. And all we need to do here is to export the edge store function. This function is the one that's gonna be catching all the API requests and handling everything we need. In the future, we will of course be able to pass in some custom configuration to override the defaults here. But for now, we have only the defaults. Okay, the next thing we need to do is to go to the root of our app and add the provider here. And that's it. Now we have all set up. Now let's see how we would actually upload an image. Here on the main file, I'm just gonna delete everything here and create an input element, a file element. And just to make things simple, let's upload the file every time we change the input element here. So first we need to add the use edge store hook here. And we have here upload image and get image source. We, we want to just the upload image for now. And here on change, we're gonna run this upload image function. Now we just need to add a question mark here because this can be null and only run it if the file is not null. And we can actually pass in some options here. For example, if you want to use the progress, maybe to show in some progress bar or something, we can set a state from this function here. For now, we're just gonna console log it to see the progress on the dev tools. Okay, now let's run our app and see what we've got. Here we have our input. Let me open the dev tools so we can see the log. I'm gonna choose a file here. And now we can see the progress change in here. And that's it. This would upload the image and it would give us the progress so that we can use it to show it somewhere. And you can also see here that the package is setting up this edge store cookie. For now, it's just a dummy value, but this will be a JWT that will be set up automatically by the package. And that's the whole skeleton of the project. And one other idea that I recently had was to actually create adapters so that people can use edge store with their own infrastructure. This could seem like a bad idea because people would be able to use the library with their own infrastructure, maybe AWS S3 or maybe GCP or other infrastructure out there. And this would mean that my service wouldn't get as much revenue as it could. But I actually see it as increasing the user pool and having a bigger community that I can promote my startup and basically have free advertisement. As long as I can provide enough value on the service itself, I think this could work. Okay, let me give you an overall explanation of what the parts on the startup are. Some of the parts are open source and public that everyone will be able to contribute and watch the code. And some of them are gonna be private. For the public parts, we have our NPM packages, which is the thing I just showed you on the demo. And the documentation website will also be open source. For the private part, we have the open API, which will be the API that people will actually use to communicate with the service. This will all be wrapped in an SDK that will be included in the core package on the Ad Store. But if we want to build solutions for other libraries or for other languages, we can directly call the service API and build wrappers around other languages as well. Then we have our web app, which is where people are gonna create their projects and upload images and stuff from the Edge Store UI. And finally, we have the infrastructure which is also gonna be templated in code so that we can modify and deploy our infrastructure with ease. Now let me show you the actual public repository and how I'm building stuff. Okay, here is my public repo. It is a mono repo and I'm using Turbo Repo to manage all the projects inside this mono repo. 
we have the packages folder, which have the main packages and some common configuration that I'm using. We have the apps folder, which is a folder just for examples on how to use the package so that people can see Edge Store being used in different scenarios and can figure out how to use it on their project. And there is the docs folder, which I'm going to talk more about later. And this project structure is very similar to NextAuth, which is another package that I use a lot. And this is the awesome thing about having all these public repositories out there. You can just see what people are doing and just do a similar thing. So you can see here, they're using the same Turbo Repo structure where they have their packages inside a packages folder and they have their apps which, with examples for their library and they have their docs here as well. So yeah, it's pretty similar and I'm gonna take a lot of inspiration from the next auth package and from other packages as well. But yeah, for now it's just a simulation of what the actual flow will be on the future. And what I'm doing here is I have this edge store function which just sets a cookie on the browser and there is the react part which has the provider and the hooks that we're calling from our app and the provider calls an init function which will set up the cookie for us and that's basically it and we can run our next.js example by running npm run dev it will open up a simple example and we can choose the file and if you press upload it's going to give a progress bar until the upload is done which as of right now is just a simulation and yeah that's it for the package part it's this is my first package so we see a lot of things that i'm still trying to absorb and learn but i think it's getting in good shape here okay now let's take a look at the docs and here i'm also taking a lot of inspiration from other packages if we just go and see what next auth is doing they have their docs built with Docusaurus, which is a React-based documentation framework. And if we go to TRPC and see what they're doing on their docs, they also have a Docusaurus configuration, which means they're also using Docusaurus in their documentation. And this is it. It's a pretty solid framework, very well known, and it's React-based, so we can build our own React components to use inside the documentation, which is really nice. And they have a lot of cool features like search bar or uh, like markdown parse features like remark or rehype plugins there are some really cool plugins to parse markdown for example if i use this plant uml you can create a bunch of different diagrams in code that will be parsed to an image on compile time for example if i want a sequence diagram i can write the sequence diagram with that code and it will be parsed to this image here on the markdown file so yeah, being able to use Rehype and Remark plugins to parse things, it's really powerful for a documentation website. So yeah, here we have our Docusaurus project and we can start it with just npm run docs. It's still using all the default template that it comes with, I just changed a little bit. And yeah, that's it. And there is another library that I was considering to use on my project. If we just go to the create p3 app repo and see what they are using in their documentation, we can see that they're using Astro for their documentation. And Astro is kind of a new framework, it's ma mainly for things that don't use a lot of JavaScript, that don't need a lot of interaction like static web pages. And it basically ships a very small bundle of JS to the browser so that the first load on the website can have a very good performance. And yeah, it sounds pretty cool, but I chose Docusaurus for a few reasons. One, because it's been here for longer and it's React-based, so I think the learning curve for us is going to be a lot better here. And it has quite a big community, so I think I'm going to have a better time asking for help for Docusaurus instead of Astro. And to be honest, I don't think that the performance difference is going to be that big. It's not like a documentation site is ever going to be slow, right? It's not going to make API calls and nothing like that, so it's going to be fast anyway. If we just go and see the next auth documentation lighthouse report, it has almost a perfect lighthouse report. And I don't know if they're doing some different optimization strategy to get this performance here, but we can clearly see that it is possible to get a very good score on Lighthouse with the Docusaurus documentation. And it is deployed on Vercel as well. So yeah, Theo always says that you should use the right tools for the right things. And he kind of tries to push you to Astro for static websites. And he says, for example, that Next.js is a back-end framework and should not be used for static websites like blogs and documentation. And I do agree with him until a certain point, but I feel that sometimes he gets a little bit extreme. 
I do think that Next.js can be a very awesome framework for static websites as well. They have a lot of cool features that helps you build static websites. You can build it using SSG with the static site generation. Or you can use ISR, which is an awesome feature that you can rebuild your website from time to time. And with, if the data has changed, it's gonna do a static website with the dynamic data, which is really cool. So yeah, even though Next.js was not built originally to build static websites, these new tools and features give the ability to do that. So yeah, for this project, I'm gonna start with Docusaurus. But that said, I am interested in the Astro framework as well. I always love to try new tech and see what's coming out. And eventually I'll probably make some project here in the channel using Astro as well. And who knows, maybe I will love it and I will want to migrate my whole documentation from Docusaurus to Astro. And yeah, that's it for the public repo. Now let's take a look at the private repository. So here it is. It is also a monorepo built with Turbo Repo. And this project is divided in mainly three parts. One is the API, one is the web app, and the other is the infrastructure. Let's start taking a look at the API. So the API is a standalone project. I didn't use TRPC here because it's an open API. And to be honest, I didn't find like an awesome way to build an open API with TypeScript right now. I search a lot, maybe I'm being too picky here, but I feel that there is a great room for improvement and building open APIs right now. I wanted like a framework that would allow me to use Zod for the input and output validations, and that would take the comments and the Zod schema to automatically build a Swagger-like API documentation. But yeah, I couldn't find like a very good framework. Most of them you would have to like write things twice anyway, so I don't know. It kind of felt like a little pointless. There is a TRPC open API package that I tried a little bit, but I don't know, I didn't feel it. But this is also kind of a new package, so I think there is a lot of things that will be improved in the future. Maybe this will become a very good option. But for now, I just decided to forget about automating the documentation for the API. And yeah, this was built with the serverless framework. I started the project with this command here, which builds a template for building an API with TypeScript on serverless framework. And I made some changes to the template to be able to use Express for the API and Zod for the validation. Here you can see that we're building the input schema and the output schema. And there's like a simple API that builds the handler with the input and the output schema and just returns a simple message. And yeah, the cool thing here is because it's taking the input handler and automatically passing the types here to the request. If you see here, you can see that the, it's a typed request with a name string. Even though we normally this would be like any, because I use some TypeScript magic here, it's gonna take the, the input schema and it's gonna type everything here properly. That was pretty cool to build. Yeah, and here is the file that does all the magic with the TypeScript. Okay, and to start the API, we can just run the npm run API command. It will run the serverless offline command that will start the local server for our API. To test it out, we can use any solution out there. I have a plugin that's called Thunder Client in the VS Code. And if I make this post hit request here, a response should appear. And yeah, just like that, we can run our API locally. There are still a lot of things that I want to do to improve the base. But yeah, serverless framework is the best way I've seen to work with Lambda functions. There are other services out there like Amplify or like the serverless application model or SAM. But yeah, from all of these frameworks that help you use Lambda functions on AWS, the serverless framework is the one that has the best development experience by far in my opinion. And by the way, this repository is private, but I have created a public repository to share the template. And if you want to check it out and maybe use it in your project or just test it out, I'll leave the link in the description. But yeah, let's go to our next project, which is going to be the web app. And I've started this project with the create T3 app, which is basically a template to start a new project with Next.js and with all those cool libraries like TRPC and Prisma and things like that. And it is a very good developer experience. Theo and his community are doing a great job with this stack. The only thing I changed from the original template was that I changed the session to be a JWT session instead of a database session. Basically what I changed was the next auth configuration and some database structure things. And basically the main reason here is that I don't want to be making session checks on the database for basically every request that comes to the website. And JWTs are a very solid way to manage session. If someday I decide to migrate to a database option, I probably won't use my main database to do the session control. I'll probably use a NoSQL database to do that. But for now, I'll just go with the JWT sessions and no database requests. 
Yeah, and one thing that I want to do that might be a little bit difficult is that I want to change the Prisma configuration to be a local package so that I can use on the web app and on the API at the same time because both of them are going to be using the same database. But since they're completely separate projects, I'm thinking on creating a Prisma package here just to use locally that I can import in both of those projects. This is the cool thing of using Turbo Repo. You can make like custom packages really easy and they're just local packages, not like something that you're gonna deploy to NPM. But I feel that I might struggle here a little bit with the Prisma configuration, I'm not sure, let's see. But yeah, that's it for the web app part. And then there's the infra part, which I'm using the AWS CDK to build it. Another big option out there is Terraform. A lot of people are using Terraform to handle their infrastructure template. And I have used Terraform before as well, but the AWS CDK is just so much better because you have all the power of TypeScript, you have a completely type safe way to template your infrastructure, and you basically have all the documentation here on the IDE. You can just hover and see the ways to use and examples and the default values for each thing. And yeah, it's been a really great experience. It's easy to deploy as well. It's just so much better experience than I had with Terraform. And yeah, I just use CDK deploy and all the configuration I made will be deployed to my AWS account. I have also published a public repository with this template that I'm using. And as always, I'm gonna leave the link on the description if you wanna check it out. And yeah, I've started the CDK project with the normal CDK init app command, but then I made some small changes to make it easier to deploy to multiple environments. And yeah, that's basically it, all the tools I'm using and why I chose them. Hopefully on the next month's video, we will already have some working prototype and some users actually trying it out. And if you want to be one of the first ones to actually try out the service and give feedback, don't forget to apply for early access on the landing page so I can reach out to you to give you the access. And yeah, I want to hear your thoughts on the things I showed here and the tech I'm using. Would you do something different? Do you have some like other preference or something? Share it in the comments down below. And yeah, as always, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one. Ciao,